welcome back to another video. I hope you've all been having a wonderful week. Today I've got another art haul video and this is my summer haul. So a couple of quick disclaimers to get out the way before I start showing you guys all these art supplies. First of all, as usual, I am not affiliated or being paid by any of the companies or brands here. This is just the art supplies that I buy and that I like using. As I mentioned in my previous haul video, I don't tend to do these sorts of videos too much here on my channel but as you guys all seem to really like the first video and I had a load of new art supplies I thought it would be a good time to do a little summer haul video and share with you guys some of the new things that I've got. So this is a reasonably large pile and I've recently had my birthday so most of these things are gifts and the rest of the stuff I purchased in the last couple of days because I'd run out of quite a few things and when I buy art supplies I tend to save up my money for several months and then bulk purchase or purchase enough just to make uh, the shipping costs worthwhile um, and I do get better you often get better deals on shipping if you spend a little bit more so that's how I tend to do it just so that it works out especially when you're buying heavy things like paper pads it just makes much more sense to um, buy enough to last a while than to buy one thing at a time Anyway, that's what I found, and having said all that, now I'm going to show you guys what I've got. Starting first with the paper, this is an, a big A3 pad, it's got 12 sheets, it's 300 gram watercolour paper by Derwent, actually a lot of the supplies in this haul are by Derwent, and as I said, 12 sheets and it's gummed at one end and it's a big pad. So the reason I got this paper is that it's super smooth watercolour paper, now, when you say watercolour paper, I automatically think of a very textured paper, but this is super smooth, and to me it feels like Bristol board. It says here that it's superior smooth surface, perfect for pencils, ideal for watercolour pencils. So I do use pencils a lot, but I can feel that it's going to take my Copic markers perfectly, and it's a nice big size, so I can cut it into whatever sizes I need. Now you can get this in A4 and A3. An A5 and I think you can actually get it even one bigger as well but this size suits me perfectly so I'm going to be looking forward to using that. So the next thing is also by Derwent and it's the Sketch and Store sketchbook. I just recently filled up my previous A4 sketchbook and so I was in need of a new one and I wanted to try a different brand. So this is an A4 sketchbook and the paper is 165 grams which is um, 110 pounds it says on here and there are 56 perforated pages which means there's a little line here that you can tear them out e easily and the paper is thick it's lovely and smooth and it feels perfect for markers there is a very slight texture to it so I feel like I can use a few pencils on it as well and as the name suggests the book has a storage pouch at the back here. This is another sketchbook and yes there are quite a few sketchbooks in this haul but this is just because the weight, the shipping, it just makes more sense if you buy more um, because the shipping's all the same price after a certain um, price. So this is one of my all time favourite sketchbooks. There are only 30 pages in it, again it's A4, it's by Canson, it's a 1557 drawing book, 180 grams and white paper, but the paper is textured and just it's a really nice drawing paper. It's very good for rubbing out, it takes the Copic markers lovely, it can even take pencils. I've done quite a lot of pencil work in this book, although after a while you do have to be careful because it will not take that many layers. So this pad of paper snuck into my shopping basket at the last moment. Um, it's 50 sheets, it's A4, 200 grams by Canson, it's mixed media and it was so reasonable that I just thought this is just perfect paper and when I'm looking at it and feeling it, it feels a bit like a Bristol vellum. It's not completely super smooth, there's a slight grain to it but I think it does feel similar to my Bristol vellum. It says it's mixed media so the picture has people doing watercolour on it but it's not 300 grams it's only 200 and for me I tend to saturate the paper with water when I do watercolouring so I always need at least 300 grams but for markers and maybe light washes I think this paper feels really nice. These are some of the things that I received as birthday presents and 
these are Winsor and Newton inks. I've had these before in the past, but I was out of one and there were a few others, other colours that I didn't have. And so this was one of the gifts that one of my friends got me. And the Winsor and Newton inks are really lovely inks. They come in these beautiful little bottles and they're just pure pigment inside and you can apply it to your drawings with a paintbrush or a dip pen. They're really versatile and I really love using them. And I've got a lovely purple colour a green and canary yellow. So now I'm on to multi-liners and these are two that I've seen around on the art shop for a while and they're two Copic multi-liners. These are not the, re the replaceable ones. The replaceable ones look like this and with these you can replace the nibs and the inks but these are a lot more expensive than these ones. Um, and these ones seem to be quite new colours, so I have olive and wine. Next, quickly, um, this is probably a more boring type of thing, but this is a replacement ink cartridge for my sepia copic multiliner. And as you can see, it just, you pull this out here, and you pop in the new one. So now I can start using this again. The next thing I got was this pack of Stedler pigment liners and I've had a few of these before and I really do like this brand and these were on sale so I picked these up. They range all the way from 0.05 up to 0.8 so that's the finest tip available to I think the thickest one they do and this is a really nice set and it comes in this nice little packet which you can do that with just like you can with the tripless fine liners and another new thing I wanted to try out were the graphic Derwent graphic line markers and I've actually already used these in a video uh, and these were one of the things I received for my birthday and I'd like to do a separate review video for them because they're really nice liners and as I bought three I was given a little packet to put them in I got a graphite grey one, a sepia and a black and these are the three colours that these line markers come in and I have tested they are Copic proof and they have light fast permanent ink and a Japanese nib and I have 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and 0 0.2. I'll just show you the nib there. And then a couple more slightly boring things I picked up were some more replacement leads for my pilot um, mechanical pencil and then I picked up another mechanical pencil in a slightly different colour because after a while I was getting a little bored with the purple so I picked up this nice blue one and I got a few extra leads and I really do like these pencils although I do seem to use the leads up quite quickly but these are really nice erasable coloured pencils and so these are the Derwent Graphic Line Painters now these are not the same as these ones, the line markers. These are like multi-liners, but these I think are much more like a paint pen. And from what I've seen people use them online, uh, how the way that I've seen them use them, they are definitely much more of a paint pen. I've seen people use water with them, but apparently once they're dry, they are waterproof. So I'm really looking forward to testing these out. And I bought the, you can buy them individually or you can buy them in little packs. I bought pack number three and it comes with five different colors, a nice lime green, an aqua blue, a purple, a pink and a red. And they come in this lovely little case. It has information up here along with all the colours they have, some instructions for using the pen, how to get the paint to flow, the Derwent website, the artist's name as well, who designed the packaging, and the Derwent packaging is just... If I can just get this off. Ah. As I was saying, the Derwent packaging is just really gorgeous. I just really love this little cover, and even if I didn't want to keep these pens in here while I was going travelling, I could just take them out and pop in whatever pens I was taking, but these are the Derwent line painters, and as I said, they are like paint pens. They have quite fine nibs, and I'm really looking forward to doing some experimenting with them. I can't say anything at the moment because, as you can probably see, I haven't used these pens at all. I will try and do a review video sometime in the future, or at least do a speed paint where I'm using these. But they are the Derwent graphic 
line painters. So now I have these and this is another thing I received um, for my birthday and I have had a chance to test these out a little bit, hence why a couple of them are a little dirty. So these are the Winsor & Newton pigment markers and I'm sure you've all seen these advertised around on the internet. They come in these rather fancy white cases which you can pull off like this. And I think I got the primary set, so there's an aqua, a green, a pink, a red, a yellow and the white blender. And I also received as well with this some Winsor & Newton pigment paper for doing, for using these markers on. And I would quite like again to do a review video on these. I've tested them out a bit and from what I've seen... Um, they're, they're very nice markers. I don't think I'm going to be replacing my Copics with them though. Um, I think I might have to do some more testing, but anyway, they have a bullet, a fine bullet tip on one end, and a chisel nib on the other. And one of the things that I have discovered when using these, that in order to get the, the proper effect, you really should have the Winsor & Newton paper to go with them. There's something special. I've tried it. I've tried these on a lot of different papers, and um, yes, that paper you can blend them a lot easier on that paper, even though that paper is really thin, which is not something I like when I'm using markers. But anyway, um, this is not going to be a review. I just got these to test them, and I do think they're nice. I think I need to practice a little bit more with them before I give them a review. Um, I can say right now that from my from what I've done with them. They are not my favourite markers, they're not bad at all, um, I might feel that they're a little tiny bit perhaps overhyped, but I think that could happen a lot with anything that's been advertised an awful lot, or hyped up so much, You there's a point where they, it gets overhyped. And then I got some Winsor & Newton brush markers, and I've done a review of the Pro markers before, and the Winsor & Newton brush markers... Um, are the same as the Letraset Flex markers, they've just got a new branding and a new company and new labels. So I received the bold colours, they come in this nice little case, there's a, a yellow, no sorry, a gold, lipstick red, carmine, sky blue, lime green and turquoise, so there's a nice selection of colours and as brush markers they have a nice big brush nib on one end and a chisel tip on the other and they have the familiar Pro Marker shape with this little this little ridge here to stop the marker from falling around on the table too much. And I have used Pro Markers before and I know the ink is very good and the ink in these, again, is very good and I've really been enjoying using the Pro Markers and the Copics together. The thing with these is that these are not refillable like the Copics are, so that's a downside, but the ink is certainly as good a quality. Lastly, I got an X-Acto knife and a selection of paint brushes by PBO and as you can see I have used a couple of these already, I just couldn't wait, I was into the packet oh. the moment it came in the door and I've got a really nice selection, they're very soft, they're very well made and I've been enjoying using them, I've used them with acrylics and with watercolours, they're just really nice versatile brushes. And I also picked up these brushes which are actually made of acrylic. If I just bring one out I'll show you. They have um, acrylic tips, uh, sorry silicon tips, sorry these are silicon brushes and these are very useful if you're doing polymer clay or if you're, you can use them I believe if you're doing oil paints but one of the things I was going to use them for is applying masking fluid because you know how it is when you have masking fluid and you put a brush, p p p I'm sorry, if you put a brush into masking fluid, it does not come off. I mean, that brush is ruined forever. But with a silicon brush, I, I read a bit about it online, and with a silicon brush, you can put the brush into the masking fluid and nothing sticks to silicon, so it will just come off. I haven't quite tested it yet, but I'm going to soon, so I'll let you guys know how that turns out. But hopefully that will save many a brush from an untimely death. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little haul video today. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. 
and if there's I won't be able to do review videos on all of this or at least not soon so if there's anything here in particular you'd like to see a more in-depth review on or to see how they work more clearly then feel free to leave a comment down below and I will see what I can do so I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you next time Oh,